This video is brought to you by Skillshare. This aircraft design was so powerful that it could drag two fully loaded C-5 Galaxy aircraft around the world. It would allow unmatched military transportation and thanks to its nuclear reactor would make jet fuel obsolete. This was the Lockheed Nuclear Tug and it planned to change aviation forever. But it was never built and today all we know are the rumours from the initial study. This is the story. The US military had a problem in the late 70s. They needed to keep their many overseas bases supplied and needed rapid deployment of home-based soldiers. They used a world-spanning network of aircraft and ships, but this was rather inefficient and cost billions to operate. So thinkers got to work on a new solution and stumbled upon the idea of using a system of tugs to move heavy cargo in the air. While research was done at the time showed no improvement to aircraft design with a tug and glider model, essentially it made more sense to just put engines onto the glider and turn it into a normal plane and do normal flights instead. But there were advantages with this model in other ways. Namely, the tug and mission plane system would extend the capability of an existing aircraft fleet at less cost than acquiring a new type of aircraft. The plan of using a tug and dragging existing aircraft over the ocean would be cheaper than finding new ways to extend the range of existing aircraft. The Air Force would be able to keep its bombers and transport planes with the range extended by a cheaper to build single tug. And what if this tug was to use a fuel source that made it have infinite range? Such as nuclear power. You've probably seen my videos and gone, I can do that, I can make a channel called Ketchup, but you don't know where to start. That's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, YouTube, and much more which is literally everything you need to make a channel just like mine. In fact, even top YouTubers are now showing step-by-step -step classes on how to bring your passion to the world, such as YouTube success, script, shoot and edit with MKBHD, taught by Marquez Brownlee. It's for everyone from beginners to pros, dabblers and masters, as long as you're creative and curious. There are no ads and they're always releasing new premium content. If you're thinking of making a YouTube channel, now is the time and Skillshare is the place to start. The first 1,000 of my subscribers who click that link down below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity, which is a pretty dope offer. Anyway, back to the show. The Atom the wonderful power source of the last century was back, and this time it would be used with the tug and plane model. With a reactor, the tug would almost have unlimited range and endurance, running out of food and water for the crew before it would run out of fuel. It would have little application in commercial civil operations, but would pay dividends in the military. It would allow increased transportation of military supplies around the world, and could even be retrofitted to carry, and perhaps launch, ICBM missiles, much like the nuclear ICBM 747 project that we have featured on the channel already right here. The other huge advantage of this nuclear tug project was instead of putting a nuclear reactor into a plane like the Lockheed C-5, was the paradox of how to supply enough takeoff power. You see, the plane could cruise almost indefinitely, but any nuclear aircraft for missions would require normal jet fuel to take off with a payload, reducing the weight that it could transport dramatically. Any nuclear reactor would be too heavy and would impact mission performance. 
By making the nuclear aircraft the tug plane instead of the mission aircraft, it would free up the C-5 Galaxy mission aircraft to carry only fuel for its takeoff, climb, descent and landing, plus a little bit for reserve, meaning more cargo and more flexibility such as the range if needed. The nuclear tug would easily have enough power to take off on its own if designed to drag along another plane or two. That's right, this nuclear tug design would be able to transport more than one plane at a time. And this is how it would all work. The nuclear tug design shown here has a gross weight of 2 million pounds, or 900,000 kilograms, of which around 40% would be the nuclear reactor. The plane would also be a seaplane, giving it the flexibility to land at any port in the world and fly exclusively over water. If it was to fly over land, the design would have to include protection for the nuclear reactor in the event of a crash, entailing a heavier weight penalty. By being a seaplane, the reactor shell could be much thinner and therefore the plane much lighter. Once up in the air, the tug would be able to drag two Lockheed C-5 Galaxies over any ocean at cruise speeds. It would connect to them via a long cable that would allow the C-5s to glide outside the wake of the plane, something that would require complex wind tunnel studies, I'm sure, but this system would also allow those planes to connect to the power supply of the nuclear reactor. Once arriving near the destination, the tug would disconnect and return home, with the C-5 Galaxies full of fuel and ready to move onwards. There was also a study into the civil applications of this technology to see if passengers could use the concept to cross between New York and London. In this case, it made economical sense for the tug not to land at either and simply drag the commercial planes, in this case 747s, over the North Atlantic tracks two at a time, as long as the crew replacement requirements would permit. The study concludes that while 747s would be good, a new aircraft would be required to truly take advantage of this concept. The engineers did also study a concept of replacing the flight crews and resupplying them with fuel whilst in the air to allow the plane continuous operations, but this is a story for another time. Alas, there are a few good reasons why this aircraft was never built. For one, the nuclear technology was nowhere near ready for such an application. Nuclear reactors at the time were heavy and there were concerns about a fission plane crashing or having a reactor leak and polluting half of the world's ocean. Think about all those fish. Plus, there was also the question of how a nuclear plane would even work. The simplest version would be a nuclear ramjet engine. In short, the air would be fed into the reactor, which would be close to meltdown. The air would serve as a coolant for a reactor and in the process get very hot. This heated air would then be expelled directly, producing thrust for the plane. The heat from the reactor replaces the heat from a normal ramjet combustion. But to prevent radiation being sprewn all over the countryside by these engines, the engineers proposed that the hot air, or liquid, would actually pass through a turbine on a closed cycle, generating power that could then be provided to turboprop fans. Again, this technology was only lightly investigated and would need a decade of solid research to make feasible. We can't imagine that the logistics of the tug and plane system would be working well with commercial operators of that era, or how the entire world's aircraft logistics network would need to be changed to factor in such a plane. Lastly, any nuclear reactor would have a marginal advantage over more fuel-efficient plane development in the near future, and in the end, it seems that the military just went with better plane engine technology. Like all things, the endless march of time makes the vision of the future obsolete, even before it got its chance. Just a footnote right here squeezed in the end after that little bow tie is that Airbus today is kind of revisiting the idea but in a different form. Instead of a tug, they would use formation flights 
to save on fuel during cruise, saving around 10% of energy over a long distance flight, just like birds do flying in a V formation. But I admit this is a tad less exciting than the original nuclear tug concept. If you want to see another video just like this one, then I suggest the Insane Troop Dropship video. This rocket could take 1,200 soldiers anywhere in the world in just 45 minutes. And if you want to see more, then jump onto the website at www.foundandexplained.com. This has quizzes and in-depth articles on these topics. Thanks again so much for watching. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click that link down below in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity.